Hello. Good afternoon. And uh, in anticipation, happy Christmas. And hello to those who are joining this on WhatsApp. And hello to those who are joining this in church. Uh, inside the church, I can't see how many people are joining this on WhatsApp. And on WhatsApp, you can't see how many people are here at the church. So it's crowded, it's stuffed. There's not a spare seat anywhere. <laughs> Slight exaggeration there. <laughs> One key rule of engagement is that although this is a carol service, here inside the church, I'm afraid, you're not allowed to sing. You can mutter into your face mask, uh, but please don't sing out loud. At home, you can sing to your heart's content. Uh, to balance that out, because we can't have a carol service without carols, I've cut the carols down to just two or three verses. Uh, the words will be on the screen. If you're at home, then sing away. Uh, if you're in church, then follow the words um, and, uh, and take part as best you can. You can hum, but singing does distribute those, uh, those little droplets of water that carry the disease. And that's why we come to it. The theme I've given for today's service is extraordinary. It's a strange word in the English language. Uh, we use the word extraordinary to, to mean beyond ordinary. But if you say it slowly and spell it like I have on the screen, then it means quite the opposite in a sense. It means extremely ordinary. And I think what we discover in the story of Jesus' birth is that Jesus was both. He was both extraordinary, but he was also extraordinary. And we're going to celebrate that as we go. Let's begin with the carol. I, I leave it to you if you're in church, whether you wish to stand for the carol or sit, whatever you feel is most comfortable for you. Um, but what better carol to begin with than? I come on you faithful at the first two months. Came 
into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world, the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave ability to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or the will of a human, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of the Lord. To be enlightened is to discover something, to grasp something that you had never realised before, something which makes a difference, something that transforms your life and your perspective. And John saw Jesus as an enlightenment, somebody who came to enlighten us, not just a torch, not a bulb, not a flame, but a new insight into what it means to be human. And for centuries we have symbolised that at Christmas by lighting candles. For which reason, as you came in, you were given a candle. So if you're here in the church in a moment, we're going to put a bit of quiet music on and encourage you to come up, keep your distance from each other, but to come up and light your candle and take it back to your place. And if you're following this at home, then hopefully you've got a candle to hand and to light it and to place it where you're sitting and perhaps share with us a photograph of your candle once you lit it. Let's each be invited. So to another carol, a carol which speaks of Jesus coming as light. So let's join together for two verses of Heart the Hellings.
26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the town called Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of all the house of David. Virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favour of God. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her. Who was to be married, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her. These are the words of our Lord. to put together a carol service in which the people at the carol service aren't allowed to sing carols and those who are allowed to sing carols can't be together. Uh, then the, we we're going to have to try a few things that we've not tried before and just hope that they worked. So bear with me on what's about to happen. Join in. Have a go. Nobody's going to lose anything by trying. So we look at Mary and her story. But the most striking thing is just how ordinary she was. She was an ordinary young woman, probably a teenager. And the culture of her day, 14, 15, probably. <laughs> in a tiny little village up in the hills that most people have never even heard of. There's a line used of Nazareth in John's Gospel where one of Jesus' disciples says, Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? That gives us an indication of how people come to that. So this is my request of you, whether you are in the church with me, to get up from your seat and to find an ordinary everyday object. Something which is just really ordinary. Something which is really everyday. And take that back with you to wherever you are joining in this service and hold it. Here in church, we're going to play a little bit of music to give you time. You're welcome to get out of your seats as long as you don't get too close to each other. You can wander around, you can pick something up, but find an ordinary, everyday object and take it back to your seat. So you have an everyday object. And uh, it, those of us in church will share our everyday objects in, in a bit. For the moment, just focus on what you've chosen. 
I've got on my back. And what I invite you to do is to hold on to it and for the next few minutes for this to be your connection to Jesus. God became ordinary. God identified himself with the most ordinary of the ordinary by choosing Mary, by choosing Nazareth, by choosing to come and pray to Jesus. So focus on this completely mundane object and the grasp just how ordinary. Do that. We're going to sing, or no, not going to sing. We're going to just share another carol. Those at home can sing. We, we're going to go outside at the end of the service to sing. We're allowed to sing outside, we're just not allowed to sing inside. So hum along quietly to a little town. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks you, dear God. I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to send texts and follow the service together. So you're holding your object. The next task is to, is to think where to put it. Now the obvious place to put a baby is in a in a bed, is in a cot. But that wasn't available for Mary and Joseph. Because the house where Jesus was born was so crowded, there wasn't a room available for them. And they had to think of somewhere else to put it. 
And he ended up in the manger. We don't know where that manger was. We don't know whether it was in a stable. Really, have stables. It could have been in the house. It could have been outside the house. It might have been, in fact, most likely, it could have been uh, like a, a cave dug out underneath the house where they kept the sheep in the winter. But Mary and Joseph had to improvise. They had to think, where are we? This baby, other will put it in the manger. So, time for you to think where are you going to put your everyday object? I know if you're in church, it would be just really easy to stick it on the pew next to you. But Mary and Joseph didn't do that with Jesus, they didn't just stick it on the nearest to the floor. They gave some thoughts to you're at home, again, where are you going to put your everyday object? This is representing Jesus. In as much as this represents Jesus for you this evening, put it somewhere appropriate. That requires getting out of your seat. Then get out of your seat. This is odd. It's the best time to come up. So your object is moved, you found a place for it. Again, we'll come to that in a moment, but let us have a carol, if you're at home, sing a carol, which takes us into that night when Jesus was born. He was born during the night, and it was a jury that night that Mary and Joseph had to work out where on earth they were going to put their newborn child to sleep. And Carol is silent. <laughs> Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, 
Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed the star of his rising, and have come to pay him homage. And when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means these among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people. And then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me words, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at his rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And when they entered the house, they saw the child near his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been born in the tree, not to return to Herod, they left for their own country another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was brought up with the the idea that each of these gifts was symbolic. It's kind of there in the parables as well, that the myrrh was to prepare for him for his death, his death and the third of the three wise men was a bit of a sort of a somber character who forefigures Jesus' death. But when I, in adult life, looked into these three gifts, I discovered that actually that was just a bit of poetic license by a, by a hymn writer. And that in the ancient Middle East, frankincense, gold, and myrrh were all forms of currency. There were trade routes, people traveled east and west through the Roman Empire and beyond. And the trick of being a trade route to trade was to buy things where they were cheap and sell them where they were expensive. So, if as you came through Arabia, you bought frankincense and myrrh, which were relatively cheap there, by the time you got to Athens or Rome, they were worth a lot of money. So, in essence, what the wise men gave to Mary and Joseph was cash, cash, and cash. International currency which would be useful to them wherever they went. And it was hugely useful to them because where they went next was an unplanned visit to Egypt. The gift was practical and our gift needs to be practical too. And so to the last uh, challenge of the service, which is to wrap up a gift uh, for which you have a small box. If you're at home, I hope that you have a small box. I spent all week asking you to. A small box, some wrapping paper, and some sticky tape. Rather unusually presented to you if you're in the church, but that seemed like the safest way to do it. What I'd like you to do whether in a church or at home, is to wrap the box, but to wrap it thoughtfully. And as you wrap it, to consider what is the practical, useful gift that you
you can give to God, to Jesus, this year? What is your gift to God? Mm -hmm. It exists in the end in your mind, I'm not going to ask you to say it out loud. But the rack the gift and consider what is your gift. And then place the gift with that everyday object which is representing Jesus today. Which brings us to not quite the end of our service, the end of the indoor part of our service, but the government guidelines say that we can sing carols outside as long as we don't stand too close to each other. So I thought, let's do that. Let's at least sing one carol, we'll see what the weather's like and we'll see what we feel like. If you want to sing a second or a third or a fourth, I'm good for that. Uh, we'll sing as many carols as you want to sing. But we'll go outside and to sing some carols. And those of you on WhatsApp can join us with that as well, because we'll take the camera out with us and give them to you. You'll have to supply your own words though, for this bit. But before we do that, let's receive the blessing of God's love. Do stand. And as is our custom here at St. Catherine's, do turn and face one another so that we share God's blessing rather than just receive it as a one to one. May God bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He look kindly on you and give you peace. This Christmas time, this crazy Christmas time. And always, may God bless you. Amen. Amen.